I haven't sat down to tell these stories because I have been so scared. A lot of those fears aren't even based in reality. The beginning of the story that all of you were involved with begins when I first moved to Los Angeles. So I moved to Los Angeles on my 18th birthday. I came here for school. I was honestly still unpacking bags when I met Matthew. We went on our first date in Disneyland. It was super fun. I thought he was super cute and charismatic and um, I accepted his offer for a second date. It was that second date where right after dinner, I was given a fortune cookie that changed my life. When Matthew asked to be my boyfriend, he was filming it. I don't even know if I knew why he was filming it, but once we had the footage, he told me he wanted to upload it to a second YouTube channel and it quickly took off. The video was cute. I was awkward as shit because I'm like, why is there a camera here? The relationship quickly hit the ground running. There were a lot of red flags. There were a thousand more orange flags that I can now see are red flags, but at the time, I'm 18 years old, I had no idea what was going on. Centering our relationship around YouTube to me was really difficult because it put a lot of pressure on us. With that unexpected pressure, it became, and over the months, not immediately, it became harder and harder to film in a genuine way. Sort of flashing forward to the parts that I haven't addressed, the ending of it all, our breakup was really unexpected to us, and I imagine it was just as unexpected to our audience. The fight that led to Matt and I breaking up was unfortunately a drunk fight in public over something so stupid. I know that us drinking beforehand played a huge role in how feelings were hurt and what emotions were displayed, but Matthew's behavior following that initial fight really gave me the ick and led to a moment where Matthew suggested that we take a break. It was what I wanted to hear, but the part for me to take responsibility with is that I didn't ask him what the boundaries of this break were. I quickly took it as a hall pass. Shortly after that conversation, I had an opportunity to kiss a boy. And I did. Matthew found out and Matthew was very upset and said a lot of things that hurt and it left me wanting to hurt him back. So that's what I did. And unfortunately, I told Matt that this guy and I did a lot more than we did. And then I like could see the pain. I immediately regretted it and tried to rewind, rewind, rewind. The damage had been done, even though I told him I'm lying to you. I feel like there's no universe where he could believe me because, well, I just said I had sex with the guy. And unfortunately, in my effort to hurt Matt, I not only succeeded, but ultimately hurt myself for years to follow. It quickly became a toxic online storm that involved both of us. So this toxic storm obviously was a lot. Um, there were a lot of videos, a lot of tweets, a lot of lies, and I tried to speak on none of it. Like, I was literally trying to pretend like it did not exist, everything was okay. I talked to my parents about it, they're like, you need to move out. So I moved out, and I did it in a way that was secretive while he was out of town, which probably really, really hurt. I wasn't happy, I was full of regret, I wasn't showing it though. I was doing my best to find comfort and I learned that I sometimes had success with finding comfort in the bottom of an alcohol bottle, which was a storm of itself. I quickly developed an autoimmune condition called psoriasis. It literally covered like 80% of my body and was a constant reminder because of course alcohol makes it worse. Of course stress makes it worse. And that's what I was at the time. I was alcohol and stress. And this was also at a time that YouTube for me was left up to me. I only lasted a few months of doing it by myself before I took a pause. And during that pause, I also found myself in a new relationship that I didn't see coming, which unfortunately, there is no universe that I was emotionally available for. I did not give Ryan all that he deserved. I realized all of that in a panic attack one day and felt the need to change everything all at once. So I broke up with Ryan. Ryan literally did nothing wrong. Ryan's the sweetest guy I've ever met, but I, had, I felt like I needed to break up with Ryan and I needed to go home 
which was actually the start of like the most beautiful healing story. I wanted to address my feelings online publicly, um, but I had just gotten into like a real job, you know, I was working for YouTubers, which added a whole nother layer of like stress and resentment into my life because I felt like almost jealous that they were doing it and I wasn't allowing myself to do it. Yes, because I felt like I couldn't, but also I was so afraid of Matthew backlashing. It always felt like there's something more coming. And one of my bosses said, like, if Matthew comes for the company, you're out. Like, you just gotta go. So that led me to hide. That led me to literally start going by a different name. I didn't ever want someone to Google me. I was seeking to in introduce myself to people myself and not through my old YouTube videos. But I've realized that, I realize now that that's me trying to distance myself from myself. YouTube is a part of my history and it's actually like the thing that has led to the most beautiful aspects. When Matthew and I's videos became, you know, something that could be a career, our intention with them was basically to normalize a gay relationship. I had no idea of the responsibility that was granted to me. I honestly never felt like I was a lifeline to other queer people. Um, it's been through all of these years that I still get messages of people, whether it be coming out, whether it be still being alive, whether it be that they smiled that day because of our videos. I <laughs> have started to really become upset with myself because with that intention of wanting to normalize a gay relationship, I can see that I had an opportunity to also normalize breaking up with someone, that it's okay to break up with someone. Instead, I, I think I only gave evidence of it being the end of the world. At the time, I definitely didn't have the awareness of this moment being something bigger to people. And honestly, I started to resent the audience. I started to resent the audience because I felt like at times, the majority of them were believing what Matthew was putting out. I can see over the years that y'all got it, that you understood the moments of manipulation and like slander and saw through it. But at the time there was no universe where I believed that people would ever believe me. I just felt like so powerless. Thank you all for showing us love, standing in line to meet us, for caring, buying our merch. That is the coolest thing I've ever experienced. And I'm still trying to battle the feelings that I dropped the ball, but I don't think it makes sense, probably because it's not over. Honestly, I'm still trying to figure out what this channel could be. I would like it to be the presence of the alternative, but I do have some topics in mind, including healing psoriasis, also how to stop emotionally being dependent on external forces, and how to look inward. I don't even know if this makes sense. I hope it does. I have an only friends. Uh, if you're interested. My Twitter's the same, Nicolas. My Instagram's different, cosmic.route. Hit me up on socials, and maybe I'll see you next time. Bye.